Hello boxing fans, this is Anthony with BBSN and I just wanted to do a really quick uh, brief video in advance of um, the upcoming Jack Dempsey Tony Galento fight and introduce referees and talk about how they impact the game just so that would be out there prior to the fight uh, as the uh, Galento Dempsey fight will be the first fight we will use um, a referee in so I'm going to do a uh, brief description and then a round or two demo and uh, you know generally as in real life the referees aren't going to play a huge role in most fights but there is a potential that they um, will so first of all there's four uh, sample referees and let me talk to you about uh, or mention basically how they will fit into the game first of all I'm not going to do a large number of referees uh, basically <clears throat> Referees that are just standard that really don't have an impact on the fight. There's really, in my opinion anyway, at least initially not to do, you know, 30 referees that all have the same traits. Um, what I will do when the game releases is it will have probably, um, probably 8 to 10 referees that all embody different traits. You know, just so you're able to use different, uh, different referee styles and mix things up there. Um, and add a little bit of variety to the game. Again, if, if there's going to be 30 that do the exact same thing, other than you know having the actual name in there, there's really, again, in my opinion, not a need to, uh, to do copious amounts of referees when I really want the focus of the game, obviously, to be on the fighters. So let's talk about the referee cards. So I'll bring this up uh, <clears throat> close so it can be seen. Um, this is Steve Smolger, and as you can see, uh, I just just recently completed tweaking and testing of the referees in the last uh, couple of days. So um, I have not uh, translated these to card stock yet, so they're not like the fighter cards. But that uh, that will come on my next trip to uh, to Office Max when I need to update fighter cards and also print out some examples of fictional fighter cards as a heads up for one of the future uh, promo slash hype videos. So here uh, you'll see the information is fairly simple. Steve Smoger, it indicates the years they were active. Steve Smoger started in 1984, still going strong. Uh, and then it breaks down four different categories. Uh, basically how the referees are on fouls and the, the ratings there are lax, standard, and tough. And for stoppages, uh, again, the ratings there would be quick, standard, and slow. And how these ratings come into play is they will affect the fighter's ratings during the fight. So in the case of a fighter who is tough on fouls, and Mills Lane is the toughest one <clears throat> so far, excuse me, Plus two to each fighter's foul rating. Uh, Smoger is a plus one. And what that does is, on the fighter's card, obviously each fighter is rated for fouls. And if a foul result does come up, uh, the 1D20, if it is within that range, equal to or less than six in Marciano's case, he will have committed a foul. So a referee been tough on fouls is going to add one to that range under the premise that they will be looking closer for any type of shenanigans and be more apt to call a foul. And as you can see, Mills Lane at a plus two is obviously much tougher than Steve Smoger, who is still tough. So in the case of Rocky Marciano and whoever he faces, their foul ratings will go up one. So one to seven on the 1D20 on a foul chance will now be a foul for Marciano when Smoger is refereeing the fight. Uh, conversely, and I actually don't have any referees yet who are lax on fouls, but uh, George Seiler is an example. Standard, no adjustment. Uh, the second rating category on there is stoppages. And again, it's slow, quick, and standard. So in slow, when there is a possible TKO chance, 
the referee will actually deduct one from the fighter's will rating. So Marciano, hard to stop anyway via TKO. He has a will of three, which means he can absorb punishment and fight back. Uh, with Smoger in there, that will actually go to a two because Smoger is more apt to let fighters go longer, take more punishment before he steps in. Uh, bring up Joe Cortez. And Joe Cortez, a little bit of a reputation for stopping fights quicker. So in that case, a plus one, he would make Marciano's will rating go to four as he is more apt to step in sooner when a fighter is taking punishment. So that's those two areas are the main effect that they will have in fight, the in fight process. Uh, you'll also see on here uh, scoring adjustment and title bias. Now this, this comes into play uh, in some jurisdictions, referees, most of boxing now is three judges scoring a fight. Uh, in some jurisdictions, the referee will still uh, be one of the official scorers of the fight, so you have two referee or two judges in the referee scoring. If that is the case, then this will come into uh, play and will affect the roles on the um, scoring chart here, which I'll just bring that up. So on the judges chart difference, Uh, right here. There is a set number of roles for the punch differential in each round that determines how a particular judge will score. And just looking at 1 to 4 in this example, a roll of 1 to 11 on the 1D20, the judge will score in favor of the fighter that has the uh, most points or punches landed. If it's 12 to 17, whoever is has one to four less punches landed would win the round. And as you go up, the odds get um, increasingly less. So nine to 12 point uh, differential in punches landed. One to 19, it would go to the high score. A roll of 20 would be uh, the one blind judge who gives it to the low score. So the scoring adjustments, and in Joe Cortez's case, he has no adjustment to scoring. Uh, he's a standard. And George Seiler, he is a judge with a bias, so his scoring rating is inconsistent. So in the case of a 1 to 4 result, instead of 1 to 11 giving the uh, round to the high score, it would be 1 to 9, and 10 to 17 would give it to the uh, low scoring fighter. Uh, 5 to 8, normally, a roll of 1 to 15 would go to the high score in the round. And in this case, 1 to 14 would go to high score and 15 to 20 low instead of 16 to 20. So that's how that works. And finally, uh, title bias. And title bias would come into effect when there is a championship fight. And the only one of these four who has a title bias is Steve Smoger. And as you can see, if there is a difference of one to four, and it's one to four either way, uh, whether the champion or the challenger has one to four more punches landed, he will always give that round to the champion 10 to nine. So that is how uh, title bias works. And you can see title bias here is champion. And if they do not have any title bias, it would be none. So that's basically it. Um, other things on the cards that I have, uh, how many total fights they've refereed. One thing that surprised me, Steve Smoger, over a thousand fights. But Mills Lane, he um, kind of surprised me when I was researching him. He's only refereed 248 fights. And it seems like he is probably one of the uh, preeminent examples of somebody you would know as a referee. Uh, he had that catchphrase, let's get it on, and uh, tough, and he, he had a very powerful uh, char charismatic presence in the ring, um, but did really not referee a lot of fights, and the main thing in, look, in researching his record is because of his respect, and he also was a, had a full-time job as an attorney, so referee was not his gig, so to speak, as it is, it is not for most people, but... Um, you know, Smoger has obviously been more active and makes more of his living refereeing fights. Mills Lane, 
uh, I guess for lack of better words, a part-time gig for him, so, but he was so respected that the reason we saw him so much is he got the big fights, a lot of big title fights, a lot of big television fights. So uh, despite his relative lack of fights, um, he is again probably one of, if not the most uh, well-known referee out there. So what we will do is have a quick example of a fight here. And we'll use Joe Cortez. So Joe Cortez is tough on fouls, quick on stoppages. So there will be an adjustment when those ratings come up. And again, I'm just going to do a round or two. So may not uh, come into play that he even has any effect on the fight, which again, a good referee, you want that to be the case, as it's about the fighters, not the official. So for our example, we will have a mismatch, and I'm not even going to keep score, just going to do a couple rounds. Uh, Rocky Marciano will make his Glory Days boxing debut against Fireman Jim Flynn, and Flynn uh, did have a little bit of pop. Uh, most of those knockouts did come against very substandard opponents. He fought uh, 26 years in the ring and fought over 100 fights, won 64 of them, uh, lost his share as well. And Flynn was one of the uh, quote-unquote great white hopes of the Jack Johnson title era. And actually failed in an effort to um, get himself in a position to take the title. So we will have these two as our example and we'll go through the normal process. And again, uh, just in case you're seeing Glory Days Boxing for the first time, a game that is in development and slated to come out near the end of this year, I will give you a brief uh, rules overview before we get started. Uh, the two die six are referenced in these two categories here, uh, determining which fighter controls the action. So a fighter with the most stars, they will control the action uh, in the fight throughout. And basically they will be on offense. The fighter not controlling the action will be on defense. If the star ratings are tied, and you can see here in a mismatch, it will be Marciano controlling the action the majority of the time. There are uh, three chances here where he could um, get basically tied with Marciano, and also three that he could control the action, but the majority is going to be the rock. If uh, it is tied in terms of number of stars, the Fighters are going to have an exchange, meaning they're going to throw punches simultaneously. Uh, both fighters will be on offense, and there will be no defensive checks that round. And the way an exchange works is whoever has momentum initiates the exchange, and the second fighter responds. So really all that comes uh, does is decides who goes first or gets off first in the exchange. And if a case in the case of a... Uh, knockdown or if both fighters have knockdown chances who gets to resolve that knockdown slash knockout chance first and momentum is gained uh, in one of two ways either by winning the control check you will have momentum that round and it will continue going into the next round or the fighter who last lands punches in a segment so say rocky marciano has uh momentum in the third segment of the opening round and is fighting from the outside. He throws and misses a punch, but Flynn lands a counter punch. Even though Marciano had momentum at that point as we move to segment four because Flynn landed the last blows, he will take momentum and it goes on like that through the end of the round. So again, either winning a control check or a ring generalship check is, is the referenced in this game or landing the last punch of a segment. And that's pretty much it. Uh, again, every result pretty much with the exception of a few things on this chart, the scoring, um, foul chart, and cut swelling chart, as well as the um, random rare event charts. 
uh, comes off the fighter's card, so there's not a lot of need to uh, pour through charts or lines. Everything is pretty much right here. They all have their own foul specific uh, results, their own specific cut swelling results, and of course are rated in power. Um, chin against knockdown and knockout will cut susceptibility, foul probability, and then also adjusted ratings for when they are fatigued and stamina ratings as well. So we will go ahead and do a quick demo uh, of our first fight with referees. And again, this is just a, a prelude into the upcoming uh, Jack Dempsey uh, two-ton Tony Galento fight. So Marciano in the red corner, and we will go. So four and a six, Marciano fighting from the outside. Flynn tries to fight from the inside, and Marciano has control. And again, I'm going slow so that uh, slower so that uh, this can be followed. So Marciano will roll, and the 1D20 comes into play. It's kind of the um, actuator dice. If a punch is landed, you would check to see if this is within his power range, which uh, 7 would be a potential knockdown. And the number after the slash 11 comes into play if the fighter is hurt that segment, and we will explain that if it comes up. And so in this case, it's outside 13. Black die is multiples of 10, white die multiples of 1. And it will be a three-point cross for Marciano. And Flynn now has an opportunity to apply his defense. He is a horrible defensive fighter, so he will never block any number of these punches. He can only add. So a roll of 1 to 7 on his die would have added, and it does not. So Marciano lands a three-point cross and heads into the second segment, and he has the momentum. So you would repeat the process, and again, Cortez, no effect there. Three and a five, Rocky is inside, which is where he likes to fight. Flynn trying to be on the outside, two to zero. So Marciano remains in control. And on the inside, so Rocky, an 11, and that is going to be a wicked four punch salvo with a cross, and two is within his uh, Knock a knockdown range. So Flynn, instead of doing a defensive check, now has to roll to try and stay on his feet, and you go to his chin versus knockdown. So he has a five uh, or less, he will be knocked down, and if it is between six and ten, he will be hurt during the next segment, and eleven or more, he just takes the punch and shakes it off, smiles at Rocky. And 15, he takes a wicked shot, but he's good to go. Marciano still in control. So we go to segment three. And one and a three inside for the Rock, inside for Flynn. It's two stars to one, so Rocky continues to remain in control of this fight. And 84, 84 on the inside is going to be a clinch. And when a clinch occurs, that basically ends the segment with no further action. So we move to segment four. Rocky is still in control. Double threes inside for the Rock, inside for Flynn. Two stars to one. So Rocky is still in control of this, which is what you would expect. This should be a mismatch. Uh, with fighters more evenly matched, you will see more exchanges and more passing of uh, the ring generalship check there. So 31 on the inside. 17, first of all, no effect here. Uh, 31 on the inside is going to be a three-point hook. So 10 and Flynn will roll to try and add. He doesn't really want to add, but that's the only thing he can do. And Flynn, his defense is so horrible, he uh, gives Rocky two more punches landed. So the Rock is now at 12, and we're moving to the point where if uh, a fighter is hurt, which would be uh, basically... If there's a 15-point differential, um, he's taking unanswered punishment, we would go to a TKO check, and at that point, Joe Cortez's stoppage, stoppage rating would have an effect. The other time we would check for a uh, TKO is if a fighter is hurt, either being stunned on this result or knocked down, he is hurt also for the next segment. And if during that next segment, the fighter on the offense lands a... Uh, four-point power shot, which would be cross hook or uppercut. 
you would check for a TKO there. Uh, jab is not factored into that. And actually, I'm, I'm my fault. It's a power punch period. So any power punch, uh, cross hook or uppercut would result in a TKO check in that scenario as well. Jabs, you're not gonna TKO someone with a vicious uh, barrage of jabs, so that is excluded from that. So let's move on, two and six, inside for the Rock, inside for Flynn. Rocky takes it two to one. And Rocky could possibly end this. 75 on the inside is going to be a miss, however. And now Flynn has a chance to land a counter punch. Not a very good counter puncher. He needs a one or a two. He does not get it. So we move on to segment six. Rocky is still in control. And two and six, inside two stars to zero. So Rocky still looking to uh, take Flynn out early here. A 32. And 32 on the inside is going to be a three-point hook. And let's see if Flynn affects that. He does not. But that now puts the differential at... Um, before we move on, that puts the differential at 15 points. So now, and I'm glad that we used Cortez and this example came up, we get to check for a TKO. So Flynn, his normal uh, will rating is a 6. And that's when he is fresh. So a 6, a roll of 6 or better will stop the fight TKO to the rock. And with stoppages quick for Cortez, that makes it a 7. So seven or less, this fight is over, and it is over, and I, I love it when things go as planned. Uh, <laughs> this would not normally have stopped the fight if the referee was not quick on stoppages, so now you can see if this was Steve Smoger. Um, Steve Smoger is slow. It would have been actual minus one, reducing it to five. The fight would have gone on. So here is... And again, sometimes the dice are kind. They, they did this the first uh, demo I had of this game. And it came into play again. So the roll of seven, Cortez has a direct effect on the outcome as he boosts that uh, will rating to a seven. The fight is over. TKO stoppage in the sixth segment of round one. And what you do after that is here we have a stoppage time chart. It's in the sixth segment. So you'd roll a uh, one die six, odd or even. Odd, the stoppage comes at 141 of the very first round. Rocky Marciano TKOs Jim Flynn in round one. So uh, again, that is a, that's a result that pretty much should have been expected. Uh, this was a mismatch. And again, really happy that uh, you got to see how the new referee interaction will come into play. So that's it for this. Again, just a quick demo uh, introduction of the referees, and we will be having a full fight come up. Uh, I'm going to do it today regardless. Uh, I, I don't want to commit to live. If I do do it live, it will happen at approximately um, 5, 5 p.m. Uh, Arizona time, which is 8 o'clock Eastern time. Um, if you are around and check on the channel and don't see notification. That means I've had to record it and I apologize. I will definitely get in a live fight Sunday, regardless of what happens tonight. And that will be the rubber match between Jack uh, Johnson and um, John L. Sullivan, or not Jack Johnson, uh, Muhammad Ali and John L. Sullivan each have a, a win in their trilogy. So uh, we will finish that off. And then after that, probably will be a little bit quiet. Uh, the next video after the uh, Muhammad Ali, John L. Sullivan rubber match will be well, when I introduce fictional fighters and talk a little bit about the differences between them and real life fighters in the game. And again, fictional fighters won't be in the very first release, but they will be in a subsequent uh, short re or add on release shortly thereafter. So that, that one might be two or three weeks down the road, so it'll be kind of a quiet period. But uh, again, just wanted to introduce referees. So now you see how they work, and uh, we will be back and have the uh, dempsey Galento fight on later today. So as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a great day. Keep rolling for the knockout. Uh, this is Anthony. We'll see you later.